Hello and welcome to One Club Champ. My name is Gary and this is my Buck CC save, my youth team from the 90s. We've taken them from level 10 and we're going to the Prem. Now, in the last episode, which was three weeks ago, yeah, sorry, I've been pressing the space bar way too much without making a video. We find ourselves now in League Two after being promoted from the Vanarama National. We're about 30 games in, so check out the video. Let's see how we're doing and come on the Bucks. Well, not much time to waste. Let's get straight into it. What has happened since episode 11? Well, we got promoted. We're now in League Two. And as you can see, we are sitting third in the table after 33 games, 19 wins, 10 draws, four losses, 78 goals scored, 41 we've led in with a goal difference of plus 37, which is kind of in line with the goal difference of the other uh, two teams above us. And we're on 67 points with a good um, reign of form with four wins in the last four games. Today's episode, we are playing against Stevenage, who are sat in 11th place uh, on 49 points with, I would say, let's have a look at their, their stats. Well, they've also won four out of the last five games. So this could be a great game for us. Now, uh, let's take a little dive into our tactics. And, uh, well, we're still going with this 4-2-4. Four, four, uh, four, four. You can see that we've got a bunch of new players. Um, Eon Scully, we'll go into him in a second. Terrell Whitaker. if uh, you followed on FM20 in my Owsbury save, Terrell Whitaker was one of our Owsbury players. We've got a new uh, midfield pairing of Munoz and Milligan, a new le uh, left back called Adamu, new right back Seager, and two new centre backs in Walker and Edwards, and just to top it off, a new goalkeeper in Alsop. You'll see through the transfers that we've actually managed to make a fairly decent profit. We've sold £450,000 worth of talent. So goodbye to Chisholm Ofaka, he went to Sunderland. Goodbye to Mark Molyneux, who went to AFC Wimbledon. The beast, he's gone. We had to let him go. Uh, for a hundred, well, 300K, it's going to go up to. We also let out a few of our youngsters out on loan. Tom Chaibi is, oh, he actually made himself into a fan favourite. He has gone to TNS. So we got ourselves uh, some money from that for 100K. Josh Griffiths, we brought him in. Uh, as a free transfer, he played barely, well, three games for us. And then for some strange reason, Watford came in and offered us 15k, basically. So thank you very much. And then we sold another goalkeeper who we picked up on a free transfer from Man United and sold him to Water Poznan. So off he goes. So that's a, a profit there of 450k. And again, we spent no money other than the uh, Ray and Clark loan fee from last season, £210. That is all we've spent in the entire career save. Let's have a look at some of the players that we brought in then. Let's go straight to Eon Scully, released from Barcelona's academy. And as you can see here, Barcelona, he played a bunch of times for their B team, scoring 12 goals. He was on a free transfer and we have bought him in. Now look at these stats. We are playing him as a wide target man. I've never played a wide target man in the attacking right forward position before, but at 6'7 and 14 stone, uh, he's got work rate of 14, can't really cross the ball, can't really dribble, but he's got some great physicals here. He's young, he's 23, he's an under 19 uh, capped player. He's currently worth £110,000. And as you can see, he scored 14 league goals, nine assists in 24 get 28 games and a rating of 704 so eon scully or owen scully i mean maybe you could let me know how to pronounce his first name let's go with owen owen scully uh is our wide target man we brought in uh, jack butland but he's just a journeyman goalkeeper he isn't really played for us but he's on top wages i made the error of bringing in someone and thought it'd be decent and he wasn't so go to 
uh, Pio Munez let go from Crystal Palace, had a little loan period at Crawley. Um, he's actually doing okay for us. You know, he hasn't really played. He only got a he got a two uh, sorry a six point seven four in the Vanarama National, and we brought him in, and he's actually playing better in the seat in the division above. Who else is worthwhile uh, looking at here? Fans' favourite of mine, Dion Pereira, as a Watford lad, came through and kind of had a, shall we say, he's been searching for the right club. He's currently at Luton. But anyway, he's uh, at Buck CC for us and, again, has struggled to really put goals and assists so far. Eric Natambi is back. He's on 70 appearances, our first ever youngster. He's still there. Who else is worthwhile showing you? Peter Walker on loan, uh, got him in from Reading. And I guess that's a nice segue to talk about what has happened to our club. So since the last update where we ended up winning the league, we became a pro club. So got went into Skybet League 2 and then basically we're a pro club now. We started an affiliation with Reading, and the reason I'm looking down, I got made notes, made notes this time to let you know of all the things that have happened uh, in the three weeks since episode 11. We've also got a new stadium. Let's go to Club Info and we can check out the club vision. New stadium is being built. Boring name, it's called the Buck CC Stadium. And uh, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be something like 5,000 seater. It's going to cost us four million, and it is in Owsbury, Buckinghamshire. So that is great. We might need to see if we can edit the name of the stadium. I'm not really sure that I'm happy with Buck CC Stadium. Um, anyway, if you fancy giving us some recommendations of what the uh, what the ground should look like, or sorry, what it should be called, put in the comments in the in the comment section, and uh, we can we can select something. Uh, that's not a guarantee that I'm going to actually select any of the names that you give me. Um, it was worthwhile. I might actually do this. Let me pop up a picture of uh, the current kind of state of what Buck CC looks like. And you get a kind of an understanding of how the ground looks like. So the picture you should be seeing right now is uh, what the grounds look like at Buck CC, the Nalgo Club. Big grass field. And as you can see, there is a social club that is there. So... Um, interesting to know this club actually did exist as my youth club. Let's show another picture of uh, the youth boys. So this is Buck CC back in 1991. And uh, as you can see, this team and this created club is from this picture. So just to give you an idea of the story of us taking us from level 10 to the Prem, this was my youth club. Anyway, back to this. So we've got a new stadium. Let's go also into the squad here. I want to give you a, a, a checkup on our best youngster, which is Ryan Charlton. Now, Ryan Charlton is 20 years old. He's actually having a pretty good breakthrough season for us. He's played 27 games, uh, 20, uh, 20 starts, seven off the bench, seven goals and four assists. Got a 6.90 rating. Let's look at his progress and development. Now, I love this page. And uh, in terms of his progress all time, here we can see he's started at two stars and he's making his way up. He's now two and a half stars, two and a half stars, and then he's getting close to being a three star player. Now, if we go to attributes, let's go in terms of from 18 years old, in fact, all time. As you can see, uh, he's improving. He's nearly 20 years old, so he's improving. As you can see, technical stats are going up two, three, uh, times mentals are going up to you got like four and five and then over here in the physicals one of the biggest growths is in strength and as you can see in the training we have got strength as one of the additional focuses here and we're also giving him some player traits and he's a fantastic trainer his training is always at 8.9 so i really like the fact that he's uh, he's coming through and here is ryan cholton so he plays as a, a wide right forward and there you go. Who else to bring you through? Um, let's have a look at, um, at Niall Ennis and Tolaj. Ennis is our top goal scorer. Here he is, 14 league goals, or 21 goals so far through the season. He's having a great, great season. He's come up from the Vanarama North. Niall Ennis is doing the business for us. And Laurent Tolaj, 
He's played as a pressing forward, 18 league goals in 29 games, and he's got a 7.18 rating. So he's doing fantastically well for us. Let's go and have a look at um, our team report. And not our team report, let's just go into the dynamics. Everything about our club is going really well, other than, um, you know, Niall Ennis is a little bit worried about Terrell Whitaker coming in, but that's okay. In terms of this, the competitions, as you can see here, sitting third, got knocked out in the second round of the FA Cup by Ipswich Town. We got this, these, these, these trophies here, Papa John's trophy and the Builder Base trophy, really not bothered and all it does is just mess with the fitness of the players so throw the reserves in so anyway we got knocked out of the southern section uh, by Leighton orient which was fine and then build a base we were currently in the quarter final which was our minimum expectation anyway but the big thing have a look board expected us to avoid relegation and we are currently and have been like second and third the entirety of the season so I love the fact that there's three automatic promotion positions in League Two. And if we can get ourselves into League One, well, let's have a look at the types of clubs that we could be facing here. Sunderland, potentially. Oxford, MK Dons. So Oxford and MK Dons would be some local rivalries for us. Let's have a look who potentially could get relegated. Crystal Palace, one of Buck CC's board members, Mr. Daryl Lawson. He is a Palace fan, and uh, that would be a stunning fixture next year in League One if Palace were to play Buck CC at Nalgo Stadium. That would be fantastic. Anyway, let's get ourselves into the team selection for today. As you can see, we've already gone through the tactics. 4-2-4 with uh, Tolaj and Ennis up front, and let's get into it. So Stevenage at home, they're on a good reign of form. We're going to mark, uh, mark George Alexander tightly. We're going to point the finger at the team, tell them to where we want to carry off. Terrell Whitaker is unsure. We can't let him go into the game in there. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, and here we go. Stevenage at home. And uh, let's hope, for, well, we do need three points, to be honest. All right. You'll see as well with the highlights, we've decided to kind of take it back and go on the TV view. Now the TV view, I've kind of liked it because I can see a bit more of the, the, I guess the, the wider angle of the pitch rather than in the director role that really zooms in. So I hope that doesn't annoy some people that have been enjoying the director role. I did, while I was going through the last 33 games, I really got into the 2D. Uh, match engine as well which is just a, a classic favorite of mine and especially if you, those of you that play on laptops you probably well especially laptops that aren't great with graphics 2d is pretty much your only option adamu with a ball over the top and ennis get in there beats the offside trap and that is his 22nd goal of the season now the funny thing about niall ennis in this is that whenever I do the automatic pick by my assistant, he never gets picked. And he doesn't even get picked on the bench either. So I have to manually put him back in, which is interesting considering I think he's our best striker. And there we go after 30 minutes, one new up against Stevenage. Great ball from the fullback. And uh, looking at their formation here, we should be able to get in these little spots either side. So one nil at half time. And I guess it's fairly, fairly equal um, played so far. So you must be wondering, where are we playing right now? Because this, this does not look like now go at all. Well, we're playing at the Hive, which is a home ground of Barnet. So we're ground sharing while, uh, while the Buck CC Stadium is being built. All right, we've got about half an hour to go and we've got another highlight here. And I think we might need to start making some changes just to freshen up that midfield. Shot from distance there from Christian Williams. All right, let's pause. We'll tell that, yeah, do that. And I think what we might do is, Terrell Whitaker hasn't really been in the game, so let's take him off and we'll bring on 
Iran McDonald, who we brought him in on loan from Reading as part of our partnership. Great potential. And uh, he's capped to under, under 19 level, so there he comes in. And I think I'm going to take... Let's see. I mean, Scully uh, isn't doing well, but let's take off Munez and bring on Jordan Rossiter, who was the... Uh, well, let's just say... Didn't make the grade at Liverpool and went north to uh, Steven Gerrard's Rangers. Um, and that might be where the last kind of time I remember him playing. Free kick to Steven. They've played it short. Carter whips it. Oof. Whew. All right. Well, that nearly went in. They're forwards and are not having a joyful experience playing against our back line. Let's pause there. We've got about five minutes to go. Just switch up the formation and play Charlton, bring in our young player, giving him a couple of minutes to finish. And then what I am going to do is I'm going to take off Tolage. I'm going to bring on a loan. Oh no, no more subs. I hate that. All right. You ever do that? You just get like, you lose track of how many subs you don't make. Happens to me a lot. Well, there we go. One nil win. Fairly, uh, fairly standard uh, win for us. And there we go. I think, should we try and squeeze in a second game in this uh, update? I think we shall, why not? Well, here we go. We're playing against Cheltenham now. They are sitting 11th in the table and we are still in our third place position. Let's just quickly check into the profile. Top goal scorer is a lad called Goosens from Chester, and he is 20, 24 goals. Connor Willits on 23 from Exeter, and was it Scrimshaw? Jake Scrimshaw, who is sitting third. We don't have many players in there. Owen Scully is in the third position as assists. But where we do rack up is in the yellow cards right here. We have got some high some high uh, tallies in there. Most goals scored is us right now on 79 goals. 10 more than uh, top place Exeter. Uh, we've obviously had the most number of shots as well. One of the things I do like to do is go into the overviews as well, just to see kind of where we are leading. Nowhere really. Owen Scully, clear cut chances created and yellow cards in here as well. One of the other things I do like to look at in the team details, just to compare against them, is to come down here and look at the finances. As you can see, we are 18th in the finance table um, about kind of our spend. So we've actually net, we have brought in just about 500,000 pounds. Our salary is 1.2 million a year, but we're sat third. Even more stunning right here is the fact that Exeter, they've obviously sold some players here, but they are... 24th in that table now looking at salaries they've gone from 24th x are actually pay the most for their players so it's no surprise that they are currently in the top two we are sitting ninth so we don't pay as much as everybody else so we're way overachieving another way to kind of check out if you are overachieving or not is to really go into your team report and your analyst report and it kind of says kind of the overbuild of your team. So my team is aggressive and committed. I've got some good goalkeepers um, and that's about it really. I score a lot of goals, more than the average in League Two by far, and I have more shots per game. So that's, that's obviously really good. I then got a fairly good passing. However, we do concede around about the average, so that could be better. We could defend more. In terms of stats, you've got this kind of breakdown. Yes, it makes it um, a lot of info, but if you really don't, I don't necessarily want to delve into this. I love just going into the comparisons here, and this just makes it nice and quick and easy. So on a general, looking at a general kind of aspect at the average age, I'm below the average age, which my average age is 24. It's about 20th in the league. And uh, in terms of the average height, 5'11", about average, below average in the weight and lowest in international caps. I'm just above average, well, I'm above, above fourth 
in League Two for my average salary. Average player value is literally like just over average, and th that's it. So this gives this is the highest average. This green bar up here, lowest average is the blue, and I'm, as you can see, I'm kind of around the middle. Now, in terms of just going to here, this breaks down some of the statistics as too. As you can see, apart from aggression and teamwork and work rate, everything else I'm below. Now I can obviously take out goalkeepers and it can skew it anywhere else. Looking at defensive ones, I'll take out the goalkeepers, midfielders and strikers. You can see here, I have the lowest statistics in the league for many of these statistics here not even near the average. If I go into midfield, let's unclick these guys. In the midfield, yeah, not bad. Kind of just sitting up there, a bit more teamwork, a bit more technique than the average team. And then in forwards, let's take out these. My forwards, yeah, just about again, just around about average. And then if I go into physicals, let's look, see where we are. Physicals, okay. But mentals is where we really kind of see the fact that I've got an aggressive team with, that's high in bravery. So compared to the rest of the league. And I love looking at these types of things. In terms of my next opponent, I like to look at this too. This kind of gives a breakdown of, you know, the fact that my opponents have restricted the opposition to no goals from 28 touches in their own penalty area, which is interesting. The stat pack, I like this, how we can compare their top goal scorer is Dominic Hutchinson, ex-Watford as well. He's on eight goals compared to my uh, my 18 from 30, uh, Laurent Tolage. Shots on target, again, as you can see here in the league history, Cheltenham have been in and around League 2 and League 1 for the last, what is that, 20 years. And we've made a, we've made a steep incline up. In terms of all of these types of uh, these types of stats, you can really look into this, and it's basically like things like when we've scored first, we've won 16 times, so that's pretty good. And then past meetings again just goes into the past meetings. We beat them 3-1 uh, in the first fixture earlier on in the season with Niall Ennis scoring two and Laurent Talaj getting one. So anyway, let's get deep into it. That's a little insight into what I do pre-game just to kind of check it out and set up my team. Let's go and select our team. Munoz is suspended, so we are gonna put in, let's go Pozo, and we'll give Milligan a rest and go with Bidstrop because they've got this nice partnership from previous years. Whittaker isn't hasn't done anything yet so let's put let's give yeah let's give uh let's give charlton a go owen scully's gonna give it as best as he can before we take him out and we'll bring in uh Pereira bring him in for I Iran McDonald and there we go all right here we go Cheltenham at home they have Changed their formation from their last match. They have gone with 4-2-3-1. Point the finger. Let's keep the run going. And here we go. Two back-to-back -back home games. If we can squeeze out six points, that would be delightful for us. First highlight goes to Cheltenham. Throw in down in the far corner. And hits the outside of the post. Not a good start from Bucks. Let's give a shout immediately. Demand more. So one of the other things uh, that from the updated patch, I referenced it in episode 11. When, when Football Manager looked at the patch, there was an unreal amount of goals that were scored from long throws. And so they addressed that by basically doing what it should have done meaning if you had a long throw of like two or three or four or five you weren't able to have like a Rory Delap-esque throw into the box now Ennis is in great save 
And so now all of my long throw tactics don't work because I don't have someone that actually can throw the ball long. Makes sense, right? So I now have to change that tactic and I will do at the end of this season. I'm going to go in and probably set up some short, short throwing routines. Charlton out there. Good cross in. Oh, it glances off the underside of the bar. It's offside. One of the things as well, with Owen Scully being six foot seven, we looked at our set pieces and we made sure, here we go, look, long throw, cleared. I need to do that, but that is not a tactic that's working anymore. Pozzo into N, is it on, he's onside, yes. Wasn't sure there for a second. He looked marginally offside, but I guess no VAR and Linesman hasn't given it, so has give, given us the goal. So there we go. Adamu cuts inside, plays a nice ball into Pozzo. Ennis. Yeah, Tolaj got a little lucky with a deflection off that, off that centre back there, but he sticks it away. These, these ones here, I don't know about you, I never really listen to my assistant when it tells me to work the ball into the box if that's not how I like my tactic. I don't, we're not good enough to work the ball into the box. Anyway, Bidstrup, centre midfield, Pozzo, into Ennis, again. See, even though I don't have work the ball into the box as a tactic, my midfielders seem to pass the ball into the box. And if you noticed, in the pre-match stats, it said that Cheltenham didn't concede goals from touches with inside their 18-yard box. And we've just scored two because of the way that we play. Anyway, 2-0 up. Anyway, as I was saying, Owen Scully, six foot seven. So I basically made sure all of my corners go into Owen Scully at the near post. Near post corners, again, they seem to work. Not really sure that our fullback, Seeger, showed some patience there and just dived in. Good goal from Pearson, that's 2-1. They scored with their first shot on target. Yeah, good one, champ. All right, so it's 2-1 at half time. We should be we should be out of out of reach here, but we're not. It's only one goal. I'm going to point the finger. Room for improvement. I'm going to tell the forwards that uh, there's still a lot more to come from them. They like that. Let's tell Pozzo that he's playing well. And let's tell Peter Walker to avoid another booking. Go into the tactics. Let's look at what the opposition is telling us. Yeah, and here we go. Starting that second half, big in, big half for us. First highlight goes to Cheltenham and Pozzo clears it. So I wonder how many people have got their career saves going and are now starting to think about FM22 crazy enough. It's always kind of... I know, it's like a sad moment when the new game comes out for me because I do a long career save and it takes me so long to get them from level 10 up to where it gets super, super interesting where you're going for the Premier League title and European honours. And then just as you get there, the new game comes out and everybody wants the new content. And um, so I'm definitely thinking about continuing on this career to see how far we can go. And as you go... Highlight right there, that corner into the near post. Owen Scully with the header saved by the Cheltenham goalkeeper. Uh, let's pause it. We've got a player that is injured. We've got Philip Seeger. So we're going to bring on Barney Sodi. Owen Scully is definitely struggling. So let's bring on... Yeah, let's bring... Let's move Ryan Charlton over to the right. And take Owen Scully off and bring on Terrell Whitaker as an inside forward. Give the team talk. Now, I like doing these too. You can find yourselves, sometimes it's nice to, uh, to make a difference. And sometimes it changes their, their mood. Didn't with this guy. All right, let's just tell. There you go. See Barney Sodi, he's, he's motivated. All right, here we go. Another highlight to Cheltenham, whipped in. 
Well, there you go. I mean, what is that? Their second shot on target or sh second effort on target? Yeah, second effort on target and they are 2-2. Two -two. And the referee's given a penalty. So this is, could be potentially three shots on target and three goals. Come on, Ryan Allsop. <laughs> oh, all right, okay, so 2-0 up. Cheltenham have come back to 3-2. Let's pause. Let's, let's get hold of this. Three shots on target, three goals. Goalkeeper is having a nightmare and we need to talk to him here. Focus, focus, Ryan Allsop. What is going on? Okay, um, let's do this. I'm going to put Niall Ennis. I'm going to take Niall Ennis off. I'm going to bring on Dion Pereira. Let's go. Free kick to Cheltenham. Okay. This would be crazy if this goes in with a fourth shot on target and four goals. Come on, mate, take the free kick. What are you doing? <laughs> Cheltenham have scored four from four shots on target. They have an XG of 1.2. Come on, Bucks. Let's go. Here we go. Pozzo, play it out to Sodi. Whip that ball in, Barney. Get in there, Ryan Charlton. Yes. You don't save those. Let's go. Let's go. All right. 3-4. Look at this strike by the youngster off the bench. Well, he's not off the bench, but you know what I mean. Last game, he was off the bench. Great strike by Ryan Charlton, the young lad. Come on. Can't demand more. Let's go attacking. Free kick. Oh. That's silly. Oh, thank goodness for that. That would have been a fifth goal with five shots on target. Come on. One more highlight. All right. Well, that, that was crazy. We just lost 4-3 at home to Cheltenham, who at the time had only had four shots on target and had scored four goals. Goalkeeper had a nightmare. Uh, forwards did their business. Backline did not. Well, let's see uh, what we can do moving forward. We've got a few more games left for the rest of the season. When I say a few, about 10 more games left of the season. And let's see if we can get ourselves in the top three and get ourselves out of League Two, into League One, so we can play clubs like Palace.